at Cherry Brook Technology High School. Electronics, level one, 
Now, there's no truth in the story that this is the reason Neville got the job. One of his hits in his project, which is a computerized billion table. Billion <laughs> table. And when the ball senses the pulse of the balls when they drop into the pockets and actually wraps up the score, we have to have one. So. <laughs> environment, Mary. Seven. Mary is also an extremely experienced teacher and we welcome her because that particular key learning area will pass a number of teachers in and it will need a great deal of coordination and it's exciting to have someone of Mary's experience to help us with that. Um, art, we were lucky we got two art teachers. We, um, I mean, there are many in other areas, but at this stage we still only have one music teacher. We still have to get the second one. So in art, we have Carol Wilson, who I think came from England originally, then by Queensland and now New South Wales, and has a tremendous experience in computer graphics and using computer technology to produce magnificent art images and then also to do things with those, to react to them and to turn them into paintings and things like that. So we're looking forward to working with Carol and she'll be next year specialising in photography as well in our new darkroom. And the second person is Peter Maynard, who, um, no reason in the world that he got it when he said he played first grade rugby union for New South Wales and thought there was nothing to do with either. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad skill to carry with you. We thought we could probably double up with his PE department, but um, he's got all up this year, so we don't have to use you that way. Music, as I said, American comes from Wagga and can't be here. Uh, languages, the same. Uh, 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 who, um, I mean, I think it's amazing. Teaches Japanese and French and German. She's one of those I find extremely interesting. She's amazing. And our second language teacher, Stephen Huey, who teaches Chinese, Japanese, and a smattering of maths as well, which is a great skill for us to have. We're very, very pleased to have Stephen with us. In PE, health, and PD, at this stage, we have David Trust. And we have one more application out there for a female PE teacher. It's the one position in the department you can actually specify the sex of the person. And say, okay, we've got the male, now we need a female. So they are looking forward to the sport, and he's also looking forward to using that incredible facility that we have. In English and drama, we're very fortunate to have with us Carol Wimmer, who comes with a wealth of experience in drama and Oh, performance, as I think. Um, the first time I became aware of Carol's skills was at the opening of Education Week this year. And I know Tim was there. Carol was largely responsible for a lot of things that happened there. And it was a most amazing performance. So we're very, very fortunate to have Carol with us. In careers, Russell Plumhays, some of you would have met him on the night that we ran for the year 10s going into year 11. Russell has been the Met Metropolitan North Careers Advisor, consultant for careers advising over the last three years, or four years. And um, it's great to have him because his second string is careers and business industry leaps. And as you all know, we need as much help and support as we can in working with business. So Russell will be very busy next year, as I keep telling you. <laughs> Mathematics, we have another consultant who is joining us from Metropolitan North, and that's Lynette Hunter. And uh, when I rang Glenn in Bombala and said you had another maths teacher on your staff and told him her name, it was a very excited maths head teacher in Bombala. So it's, it's the world for you, Lynette. Two people that you have met already, many of you on the open day, our first two appointed staff members, Sue Hines, who's been appointed to the English department and has ESL as a string to her bow. So that will be a very handy thing to have. And the second one, Liz Mitchell, who teaches geography and history. And we look forward to uh, involving them much more than they've been able to at this stage. We have an interview tomorrow night for our last head teacher position, and that's for the position of technology and information. And the PE one closes on the 13th to the 12th. We probably need about another five or six at the most teachers to 
uh, gather before the school year opens, but we're, we're working out just what we need now that we know the strengths and the abilities of this quite amazing staff that we've amassed together. in front of, that's going to be the restaurant. Strangely though, you do need to get into that little room there, Tom, I don't know whether that's an oversight or uh, whether that's by intent. That's the horticulture facility down there, which we should wander down and have a look at. A little bit of grass, but the rest of the will just see. Hopefully it'll grow. And the trees over on the far side have been moved twice. Where they are. Yeah, they do. They were... They were out on the side, and they were moved over onto the side. It's only been about two weeks now. So the so-called essential area for the school, something that we need to be there. Yes, indeed. Yeah, sure. And there's a primary school on the far side over there. Do you agree? No. I don't feel that tall. Ladies and gentlemen. Students, and uh, give you great pleasure to uh, call this first uh, cherry with the in water and to welcome you all to the school. I suppose I can claim to be the, uh, the first person to talk to the first assembly at the first purpose built technology high school in New South Wales. But for everybody here, it's a very significant day. Students, parents, and staff, at last we have a school. <coughs> I find that the reading school started up and pressured this one is certainly I was in the year seven of the brand new school. And uh, that is something that uh, probably doesn't seem right now, but it will be a future of being on the year. Look back and say yes, you were the first two to go out to that school in year seven. Many of them will grow up in year seven, probably in the new year. And this school is one of the issues you hear over the balance of your life. And the big director of the Clinical Tour School, I think, is, uh, is a unique experience. Something that we really say. You can get out of the, uh, the bar for us, all of us, feeling that they have mentioned that they're in a brand new school. I think the most important thing to do today is to really enjoy your day. Because there might be another one up in your lifetime. It's a one time you for all the people at school. Mr. Walker would like to give you a uh, word to you. And then I'll organise with you about what's happening out of the rest of the day. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. I'd like to welcome you all. Welcome to our first full assembly. Two weeks ago, at this time, I was speaking to Year 11 and Year 8. Year 7 hadn't even started. And it's pretty amazing to all of us at this stage to realise just how much has happened in the last two weeks. I remember saying, 
the buildings weren't quite finished. Well, then they're still not quite finished, but they're a lot closer to completion than they were then. Once those covered areas are complete, then the major building projects are finished, and then they're minor things, things that we want to adjust or alter or vary or change. Furniture still needs some work on it in order to make sure we've got the right furniture in the right rooms. That depends on supply and demand. There are now three or four hundred books in the library that are ready for use. We've got lots and lots more in the back, but physically we can only accession so many a day. Two people working flat out can only do so many books. But within the next couple of weeks, I think you'll find that access to the library and to the library books will be something that will be commonplace and not something you're just looking forward to. In the last two weeks, it's not only you people who have come together. I want you to think about the fact that the teachers were all new to one another, the clerical assistants were all new to one another, the cleaners were all new to one another, the canteen people and the parents that are helping in the canteen were largely new to one another as well. So there have been a lot of people who have done a lot of adjusting, a lot of learning about one another, a lot of learning to share and to get on together. And it really is time now that we start to involve the school, the students in that process. This school will have a school council. The elections for that school council will be happening in the middle of March. Nominations for people to be elected are going to close on the 2nd of March. And your parents and the staff decided very early on that our school council would have two student representatives on it. It would not be a school that was run by adults all the time. There would be a student voice. But we weren't prepared to decide how those people would be elected. It was important that you decide who will represent you. So in the next week or so, Mr. Taylor and some other teachers will be talking to you about perhaps the Student Representative Council. Other teachers will be talking to Year 11s about a Year 11 forum to talk about some of the issues and concerns that Year 11 have, lockers, their uh, student study, all of those sorts of things need to be discussed. We've now got the time to do that. anyone in business these days they'll tell you we should be concentrating on new technology in our education system knowledge of computers is a must these days but we need to do more than that if we're to become the clever country that barry jones wants us to be step towards that this morning or today rather with the opening of the new technology high school at Cherrybrook in sydney to tell us about that the cluster director for that area for the education department deanna herman good morning deanna uh, good morning a cluster director is a bit of a strange title isn't it <laughs> Well, I, I guess it's an unusual title. 
Well, but um, we, we run under many names, but certainly it is a director of education, yes. All right, we'll just call you Deanna. Well, what does it mean? <laughs> what does what mean? Cluster director. Well, it means we di direct a, or are responsible for the management of a group of schools in uh, districts throughout New South Wales. Right. It's the plural of schools. You have a group of schools, you've got a cluster. Oh, I see. It's like a gaggle of geese. I thought it was a grape grower. Deanna, this uh, new technology high school is being opened today. It's quite high tech, isn't it? It is very high tech, and we are indeed very fortunate to have the support of the Department of School Education and a number of sponsors and uh, partners, business partners, in this venture. And therefore, we are indeed um, very, very fortunate to have some high-tech equipment that I uh, would believe is at the cutting edge, not only in education, but certainly in industry as well. Well, how are the kids going to be taught to use this? What, what sort of elements are there in their curriculum? Well, they ha have a normal curriculum, but what we are trying to do is, um, say, in our technology and applied studies area where we have engineering, science and robotics, uh, just to give you two examples, we have a commercial kitchen on site and though all areas of the curriculum are being supported with the use of technology. Not only, when we talk technology, we're not just talking computers. Mm, robotics is a new one for kids, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. What do you hope to teach them with that? Well, if you think about having to computerise a robotic arm in order to do certain activities, the students are learning the principles of uh, engineering in terms of having to uh, uh, program a computer for certain actions. So right from the fundamentals, they're working through legadacta material in the first instance, and Aztec, for example, had supplied a um, tremendous robotic arm and computerised lathe for the students, and uh, on which they can then take the early principles of the approach and apply it into a more sophisticated context. With all this machinery around, Deanna, uh, is there a danger of, lo of losing the, the human side, like the good old reading, and writing and arithmetic stuff? Certainly not. In fact, we feel we can improve the reading and writing and the good old stuff by allowing children access to skills and knowledge through newer technologies. Um, I know that some people do have fears, but uh, it is part of our charter in this school to explore the delivery of content material in all subject areas to see how far we can take our children into the 21st century. Well, it sounds fascinating. Deanna, thanks for telling us about it. No trouble. Thank you very much. Deanna Herman, the cluster director for that area, and talking about the uh, <laughs> new sounds, cherry book. It does. Sounds silly. A cluster. I tell you oh, what. Cluster director. NASA, NASA should uh, go to that new technology high school if yes. they're teaching robotics. They've got a lot to learn about robot arms. What did that arm cost? Nine million dollars. Nine million dollars and it was useless. And they used their hands in the end. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's the new Cherry Brook School opening at 12.30 being opened by uh, the Premier. He still is, Nick Reiner, at 12.30 today, where the kids learn about the way of the future, including, of course, how to blame the computer when things go wrong. Everyone here must not now understand my pride and my admiration for the teachers and students of Cherry Brook Technology High School. In the past 14 weeks, they've worked so hard together 
to produce the spectacular and polished performance and presentations you see both here and throughout the school today. Fourteen weeks ago, I stood on that stage, sans curtains, sans most of the things that are in this hall at the moment, and played a computer-aided design video that the architects and the planners had done to show what they imagined the school would look like. Many of you have seen that video, and it's in fact been playing in the cab room today. I said then that the missing element was the human element, and it was up to us to create the kind of school we all wanted. The Department of School Education, the government, school architects, the public works department, and all the contractors had provided us with a wonderful resource, and now it was up to us. My very best wishes for the school it gives me a great deal of pleasure to declare Cherry Brook Technology High School officially open. Not a stick of chalk in sight. This is Cherrybrook Technology High School and the shape of education in the next century. Students here aren't set assignments, they're given design briefs. It's about time education started to catch up with the practices that are commonplace in our society and prepare our students for that world of work that's out there. That is a very different world. It's not about chalk and talk, it's not about rote learning anymore. $17 million school offers students a glimpse of what lies ahead in the workforce, incorporating the latest technology in every subject. Even the sewing machines are computer-aided. Cherrybrook High is so far ahead of other state schools, little wonder it's creating unprecedented demand. Families are actually moving to the area so their children can come here. A baby born this week has already been enrolled. And it's not just parents and teachers singing the school's praises. We're just like a big family here. It's unbelievable. Like everyone, they want to come to school. It's like before, oh, I don't want to go to school, but every day you're looking forward to coming to school, learning different things and using the different equipment that they've got here. Nick Greiner performed the official opening with the help of a student programmed robot arm. The school is undoubtedly a showpiece for the government, but education authorities deny money is being pumped into Cherry Book at the expense of other schools. Many of the uh, examples of expensive uh, and innovative technology here are in fact uh, uh, elements that have been donated. School now caters for years 8, 9 and 11, but will be expanded to all grades next year. Lincoln Howes, 10 Eyewitness News. Brook, Premier Nick Greiner unveiled a new generation of state schools, a technology high school where the 21st century has already arrived. We sent Sydney Extra's Darren MacDonald to check it out. From the outside, it looks like any other school. But at Cherrybrook, the students communicate in a different language. Microchip analysis, hydroponics, design technology, computer-aided um, drawing, enrichment, acceleration, remediation. And, That's, that, and all that means? And all that means is technology in, in today's world. Cherrybrook Technology High School leads the field in nurturing young minds in a modern world. Here, along with sewing in English, lessons include robotics and advanced computer design. We use the CAD laboratory on the computers, computer-aided design, that's good. 
We do that in d design what, technology. What's that in English? <laughs> um, computer aided design. It's a program which all the big um, manufacturers and stuff do use to design buildings and stuff. That stuff is high tech enrichment. You know, redraw the Tower of Pisa. If this is the school of the future, it seems teenagers will soon be designing entire residential estates. And it's all done with the flick of a wrist. For the artistically minded, there's good old music, where pencils have been replaced with keyboards and monitors. The computer, with the right commands, can do everything. Choose the instrument, the key and the tempo. Next time. IBM, Lego and Lotus Developments are just some of the companies whose donations have helped create this hothouse of high-tech nourishment. Speaking of which, horticulture is also on the curriculum, in the greenhouse and in the pot. Cherrybrook even has its own farm, run entirely by students. No elbow grease here, technology's the answer. And if that's not all, there's robotics, where even good old Lego has taken on high-tech proportions. With that car, when it hits a wall, it sets off one of the lines in the program which makes it turn in a certain direction. Cherrybrook Technology High School is an intriguing experiment, a million-dollar window into the future of education. Let's hope our advances in technology can keep up with our children. Darren McDonald, Sydney Extra. Very, very close as they come around here. 
past the Cherry Brook card table, and we've got very, very close places here. Very close race indeed.
news for our rotary. I'm Bennett Farquhar from Rotary. Good morning, principal, teachers, students, friends. Last year, Rotary raised over $8.13. We had an overwhelming response from the students of... We had an overwhelming response from the good students of Chobrook Technical High School. Who raised in excess of 47 cents. <laughs> um, and that was done by Susie DeGara. Uh, each year, a year, Rotary assists the needy and homeless people in aid to give them shelter, food, and clothing on their backs. We can't do it alone though. It's a big job and we need the helping hands of students like you. You can make a difference. You can make a difference by selling dodgy stale mints to raise money for us and the needy. Any students interested in helping this worthy cause See me at the end of the...
Congratulations to last year's Year 12. I'm sure you've all heard about the wonderful HSC results. Um, 27 in the top 5,000, which is the best so far for this school, and we're only still a young school. We'll be celebrating our fifth anniversary this year.
about what the good things are in France. Um, 